open your ears, and lube up your butthole. It's time for the What Do We Call It podcast. Now, here's your host, it's J-Man. Welcome to the What Do We Call It podcast. I'm J-Man. And I'm number one fan, Tim. I quit my job at the hospital. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, you told me. But we haven't discussed it on here. Didn't we? No, we didn't. And I also didn't get into a lot of details of some of the shit that went on there that caused me to be like, fuck you, peace out. Well, lay it on us. Yeah. So for starters, it's not just any kind of hospital. It's a psychiatric hospital for kids. Okay. Kids that come there because they've gone to an ER and they're having some sort of mental health crisis. It could be just that they have all kinds of family discord and it's making them depressed and they made some suicidal statements. They go to an ER and they're like, maybe they need to go to a a short-term inpatient facility just to get some therapy and some programming. We were hoping to do that with uh, Bubba at one point in time. It's not just the hospital. It's a company that owns multiple facilities. Mm -hmm. One of them's residential. There's kids that have consistent problems that stay there. I don't know how long for. If it's considered residential, it's more than a few months. Yeah, and then it's a stepping stone to getting into like a group home or another facility or something. There are some kids that come there and their lives are fucked up. Like the kind of shit that you hear what they've been through and you're just like, Jesus Christ, you saw so-and-so murder so-and-so. You were sexually abused. You grew up in an orphanage in another country and were basically prostituted and then adopted to here. You had a sibling that fucking killed your pet in front of you. Shit like that. Mixed in with the kids that, frankly, some of them are just pussies whose parents feed them nothing but positivity, do not know how to fucking be authoritative and lay down the law, and then anytime the kid freaks out, they just give him whatever they want to get him to stop freaking out, thinking that's the answer. That's the hardest battle there is as a parent, is to not give in to that shit. Because, yeah, it's easier to just give them what they want, but no, you got to stand your ground. Or else you will turn them into a fucking sociopath, mm-hmm. yeah. is the theory. So anyways, there's a training there for the hands-on portion. Because mm-hmm. it's a place where if somebody starts threatening to harm themselves, they have to go to seclusion. Seclusion's a room, no padded walls, but it's a room with a concrete floor and just walls and a drain in the floor and a window on the door to watch them. That's okay. seclusion. If they're bad enough, we will have to grab them and escort them to seclusion. If they won't go willingly, we may have to grab them and hold them up against the wall and see if they'll comply. If not, we will then take them to the floor. If they won't comply then, we will take a giant Velcro band and wrap their legs and then carry them to seclusion and then lay them on the floor, on their fucking chest, head in the corner, pull the leg wrap, get out of there, slam the door, lock it. And last but not least, and this is really what fucking turned me off of this place right from the jump. If they're so bad and they're fighting so hard, we will, quote, board them. It is, I believe, a seven or eight foot long by four foot wide, thick plastic rectangle with a headrest, a strap for their chest. Straps for their arms and cuffs for their wrists. Strap for their legs and cuffs for their fucking ankles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Necessary if somebody is completely going bad shit crazy. Yeah. Well, a lot of the times people would just, okay, we're going to board them. They weren't bad shit crazy. Too many times these were just kids that people had seemed they didn't want to have to deal with. So that's it, motherfucker. You're getting boarded. And the worst part about boarding is if they don't calm down immediately... They place a call to a doctor, they get an okay, and they forcibly inject them with the goodnight juice. It fucking sucks because the training that they gave us states, once you're in the process of boarding or restraining, you don't talk to them directly. You only talk to each other, the other employees, and the whole shebang is led by a nurse. So it's security plus the psych techs, which are the ones that work the desks with the kids, And the nurses that also work the desks with the kids. Mm -hmm. But one nurse is in charge of the whole thing. They tell you what steps to take. They don't want you to deviate from the known order of operations. So there's no calling an audible, which I find to be fucking farcical. 
and I made that known. And that did not do me any favors. Couple that with the fact that some people asked about what I used to do, and I told them, oh, I worked in a jail. So once I said I worked in a jail, I think a certain segment of them just went, ah, fuck him, he's a cop, that guy's a piece of shit. Again, authoritative voice, strong posture, I present myself like I'm supposed to be in charge because I'm on the fucking security team, and when you call for backup because somebody's unruly, I'm not going to gingerly stroll in, I'm going to walk confidently, and I'm going to attempt to talk them down. But here's the problem. They don't want me to say a fucking word. They just want me to come and wrestle with the kids and be the one that might get punched in the face. But I can't say shit, and I'm not in charge. I do whatever the nurse tells me to do, and if I don't do it right, they scold me and complain to their boss, who complains to my boss. It was fucking infuriating. How many times would you say you had to do this type of stuff? Too goddamn many. Dozens. Not like every day, but like every few days, or...? On a regular five-day rotation, I would say we averaged one or two on my shift. I was second shift. Some days on first shift, they'd have three, four, five all in a row. Because one kid goes off, it sets another kid off. Because they're broken down by age groups and their needs. And the worst unit is the high-acuity unit, where the ones that are really, really fucked up go to. And I don't mean to sound insensitive when I say fucked up. High-acuity means that you have some real behavioral problems or you have some real mental health issues, and normal amounts of intervention are not going to help you. Kids with gender dysphoria, kids that cut themselves, kids that have actively tried to kill themselves a bunch of times, or just that are so mentally ill from a personality disorder that they're basically younger versions of the beast. Everybody's their enemy. How fucking dare you talk to me like that? Give me what I want right now. If not... I'm going to wreck this place and I'm going to fucking take a swing at you. Not fucking fun. Yeah, it sounds really pleasant. And it's funny because there were complaints that I, quote, had an attitude. And I asked my boss, I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, I don't know. They just said you have an attitude. I'm like, could you be more specific? I have a bad attitude. I have a know-it-all attitude. I have an attitude that... What? And he's just like, I don't know, they just said an attitude. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck, dude? If I was just here, would be like, well, unless you can give me more specifics about his behaviors, there's not much I can really do. Well, that's basically what happened, too. But unfortunately, the nurses run that joint. So no matter what they say, it goes. And their fucking boss doesn't come to talk to me and my boss together. No. What she does is she gets her feedback and she gets in his ear, and then he gets back to me. So now it's third-hand information that I can't directly fucking address any of my accusers or naysayers, and it's just like, what the fuck? I'm just supposed to accept everything they say as the truth, and she's going to believe that? Because how many hundreds of positive interactions have I had with visitors, and sometimes when I talk to patients? Now, there was a number of instances where I utilized my skills from working in the jail... We call it our verbal judo. Mm -hmm. I de-escalated without having to touch anybody. It's a lot of selling them on the concept of no. Like, if you don't do what they're asking of you, we're saying right now that we're going to go hands-on with you. You've said you don't want anybody to touch you. I'm telling you that if you don't do what they're asking you right now, not what I'm asking, what they're asking, the nurses, they're going to tell me I have to put my hands on you. So you're in control of this situation right now, whether you realize it or not. So if you just do what they're asking... Maybe you take a time out. Maybe you go back to your room. Maybe it's a a room reassignment. Whatever. We won't touch you. You won't have to go to seclusion. Or you can go to seclusion, have a time out, not have to get boarded. We don't have to fight. This is only as bad as you have to make it. Guess how many fucking times that worked? How many? Damn near every fucking time I had to apply that shit. But they didn't want us to talk. They didn't want security to say shit. They're like, you don't have a rapport with these patients. I don't have to. I was trained in a matter where I can confidently speak and try to sell the concept of following the rules or knocking it the fuck off to anybody, whether they've been here for a year, a month, a day. That's how I was trained. You learn how to deal with people. These are kids. They're just smaller people and they have an undeveloped sense of propriety. And I'm a lot bigger than they are and I look fucking scary. So if I talk to them calmly and I make them believe that they're in control, which honestly they really are. Yeah, they are. It de-escalates them. 
And for them to say, well, you don't have the same rapport with them. That's because you never want me to talk to them, you dirty motherfuckers. Well, how good is your rapport if this kid's starting to freak out? And that's the funny thing is this place was super clicky. Well, I was told that shit when I started there. Like, hey, just so you know, it's kind of clicky here. Like, what do you mean? They're like, well, you'll see. Certain groups of people stick together. Oh, it's true. It's like fucking high school there. It's sad because with their pay scale and their non-union status, they mostly get people that work there that are fresh out of fucking college. It's their first real job. Or they're at the tail end of college and they're like 21 or 22. So I'm already at a disadvantage because, I hate to bring this up again, I'm a white male and I look like an asshole and I come across like a dick sometimes and all these little fucking young millennial females that think they know everything, but unfortunately, you stupid bitch, your brain's going to keep developing for another six to eight fucking years before you're, quote, an adult by science. But hey, you fucking know it all, right? It got to the point where my line became, I'm so frustrated being told how to deal with kids by people that A, don't have them, and B, are younger than some of my teeth. That was my line. I have teeth older than you. Because you can't say I have wrinkles in my sack older than you. That's not professional. You know, it was funny when Bubba was going to one of these things as an outpatient. The therapist he was working with, though seemingly knowing what she was talking about, I could tell she she, you know, she didn't have any kids. She was really young. She might have been in her mid-twenties. So. It sucks. Because even though there's people there that are really good at their job, and they've been there a while... You don't have kids. So you approach this as just a patient. I approach this in dad mode, which may or may not apply. Maybe it's unprofessional of me to think like that by some people's fucking uppity pearl-clutching standards. But I'm thinking like somebody that deals with kids. I know how to handle some of their weird eccentricities because I got a couple of kids that have generalized anxiety disorders. Why? Because I have one and the beast has one. It's just a part of growing Mm -hmm. up in the digital world. A lot more kids have anxiety and depression. I just, I don't get how, but... They don't know how to fucking handle it because they don't have enough social interaction. It's all through screens. Nothing's personal enough. It's like that episode we did a few ago. Yeah, no, no, okay. So they didn't grow up like we grew up where you fucking had conflicts. You and I have gotten in a couple of really sissified kind of fist fights. Yeah. But we stayed friends. We got the ugliness out. We worked through it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, and we've been friends for 30 fucking years. We have a rapport. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of these kids, they don't have that same level of depth to their friendships. They don't know how to handle life. They don't know how to handle their parents. They're just bombarded by shit online all the time. And they just don't know how to fucking cope. There's so much information online that it's all becoming useless. But interestingly enough, some of these kids have been through these facilities so many times, and even though they don't have the most wherewithal to deal with adult concepts, here's something I got sick of hearing from the kids we'd bored. This is so traumatizing. Why do you do this to us? This is just terrible. One girl said, I wasn't suicidal before I came here. I was just depressed. You people make me hate myself. I want to die. And how come you're not talking to me? Why won't you say something? The kid's addressing a staff member by a name. And they're just ignoring them. And that's what you're supposed to do. Mm, doesn't sound like what uh, would be very effective on a child. It's fucking hard. I have to agree with that one. You know, it's just like, it's more traumatizing here. I was just depressed before. But I don't even know why, for depression, why they ended up in that facility to begin with. It doesn't sound like it's required. Yeah. There's a number of kids that are in there because, you know, the en vogue thing to do is tell them everything they think about themselves is okay. Right? So this mm-hmm. kid decides, oh... I'm trans now. I'm not saying I have anything against being trans, but at that young of an age, I don't feel they have the necessary maturity to properly grasp that concept. Yeah, what it means for them down the road, yeah. So a lot of them are fucked up in terms of how they see their parents because they're not instantly accepted. The schools are like, accept, accept, accept. Don't talk about it. Don't question it. Just tell them, okay, you're that now. As a parent, you have a responsibility to kind of, you know, discuss the nature of that and the gravity of the situation with them. Mm -hmm. Guide, you know. Some parents are just like, fuck you, no. And the kids are like, fuck you, I'm going to kill myself. And then they tried, like, to get back at them. It's messy, dude. 
Mm. Adolescent psychiatric health care is nothing to fucking joke about. Like, some guy that has been diagnosed as schizophrenic 20 years ago and likes to sit in his room and bang his head on the wall, right? That doesn't traumatize me. A little girl who weighs as much as my legs and is only a couple years older than my stepdaughter saying how traumatized by us wrestling her to the ground and strapping her to a board is, that shit hurts my feelings. And when I finally met that kid's parents, I am not too man enough to fucking admit this, I started crying. Not weeping or heave crying. I legitimately teared up like I saw the name on the tag for the property that I had to go through. And I just said it out loud. They're like, yeah. I'm like, they're like, what, what's wrong? I'm like, before I did this, I want you to know that I was a social worker. I was a guardian for vulnerable adults. And many of them fit the criteria of your child. And I don't know her story and I'm not asking you to tell me what's going on. But I just want you to know that I have been affected emotionally by meeting her. And it reminds me of some of my clients. So some of the things that go on here, it really hurts my feelings that we have to strap the kids down. That you got a very special kid. I hope they make their peace with what's going on with them. Like I'm fucking almost tearing up talking about it now. I felt so bad for this girl. It's the one that grew up in the orphanage overseas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the parents, the mom turned away and she's wiping her eyes. And the dad's just kind of wiping his eyes. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm very sorry if it's unprofessional for me to bring this up. I just... I want you to know that I've been affected in a way that I would still consider positive. And my heart goes out to you as a parent myself. I don't know what you're going through, but you have my sympathies and my support. And the dad's just like, that means so much to me. Thank you so much. And the mom's like, it's not unprofessional. I'm glad to know that somebody that works here actually cares. So when I walked out of that motherfucker, it was a hard decision. But they made it so miserable for me there. How, you may ask. Not just by telling me, I'm doing things wrong, or I'm not learning enough. There was an incident months ago. There was a kid there. I use the term kid loosely. It was virtually a legal adult. This kid was schizophrenic in the high acuity ward. Mother came to see him. Mother did not speak English. So every one of our housing units, it's like a hallway, right? Mm -hmm. There's a desk. It's like a big letter T. The desk is at the end of the T. The rooms are down the hallway on either side. High acuity is one hallway with double doors. It's extra secure. This kid's mom is in there. They call us up there because there's a situation. Nobody told me what was going on. But this kid tried to run and jump through a second story window to break out of there. What? Maybe you might have wanted to clue me into that before I came up. Gotcha, bitch. I get up there. I step into the room with their desk. It's warded off. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like a locked closet with viewing windows and cameras and shit. They're like, oh, so-and-so's flipping out. Fuck. And they open the door because he's smashing the furniture in his room, trying to bust the window out in his room. Wow. He tried to jump out of a main hallway second-story window in front of his mom. And she's just standing there fucking gobsmacked. Now, one part of this story that I left out, it's a minor detail, has an older brother. I met the older brother the night that he got there. Kind gentleman. They're Arabic. They come in. They have his property. I grab a book. I flip it. I'm like, oh, God, this is a Koran. I'm not... I'm not holding this wrong, am I? I'm not desecrating your holy book. He's like, oh, no, no, you're fine. But wow, thank you so much for asking that. I'm like, I just want to be considerate of your faith. Because that's how I am, honestly. I try to give exemplary customer service to all these fucking visitors there because they are there because some bad shit's going on in their life. They don't need me to be a dick on top of it. Now, I've Mm -hmm. joked about some of the shitty people that came there because they fucking acted like children themselves. But more often than not, I went out of my way to be kind, considerate, jovial, get a laugh. The brother appreciated it because he's like, our father died and I raised him myself basically with my mom. I've been the father, right? So flash forward, the brother's not allowed on the unit. Only parents could go because of COVID restrictions. Mom is there. Kid tried to jump out a window. They call a bunch of us up there. We arrive, goes to his room, smashes all the furniture. We're in the hallway. I'm standing outside the door to his room because they're like, oh, we got to go do something. They open his door. They're pulling out the busted furniture. Who gives a shit about the busted furniture? Let's get the kid out of there and get him to seclusion, right? Mm -hmm. You can fucking pick up a busted desk later. But I'm standing there and the kid comes out. He's like, we going to fight? You want to fight? Let's fight. Come on, bitch. Let's fight. We'll fight. I'm like, I'm not here to fight you. I'm just here to help them. They want you to calm down. I told somebody, like, we got to get mom out of here. So we're at the far end by the windows. 
They bring her down to the far end where the double doors are to get out. Now, everybody answered the call for backup, right? Mm -hmm. There's 14 to 20 fucking employees standing there. This guy's about to raise hell. So I wave. I'm like, get mom out. So instead of using a single side door to get into an elevator lobby, they use the double door to get out to the next wing over, which is where the small children are. There are kids there as young as seven. Mm -hmm. So they take the mom out that door. He sees the door. He somehow runs 80 fucking feet in about three seconds and does a running jump kick to catch the door before it locks. He's now in the children's ward. Fuck! Everybody goes running out that door. Somebody chases his ass down. This somebody is a guy that's in his 50s that acts like a 17-year-old girl in terms of he's gossipy and he's a little bitch. He chases the guy down, bear hugs him, sweeps the leg and takes him to the ground and fucking smashes the kid's body between his own and the concrete floor. He asked me to sub in to grab his arm as we got him on the ground. So I did that. And we're trying, and this guy's got so much adrenaline. He did a push-up and lifted me and another 200-pound guy. He's got parts of two 200-pound guys on his shoulders to hold him down. He lifted us both up. So it's fucking all hands on deck. And then this one nurse, and this is my bad, She's like, you got to move the arm. I'm like, I'm not ready yet, okay? You just did a push-up and lifted two 200-plus-pound guys off the ground. I, Give me a second. And she's like, ah. And then she walks away. Now, I should have gone and apologized to her later, and I didn't. But I was still pissed about the fact that this shit happened because you didn't get the mom out of there. You opened the fucking door to the room before the mom was out of there. Then when you got the mom out of there, you opened the wrong fucking door that you're not supposed to use because of the elopement risk. And this guy got out there. And if he would have injured some fucking little kid... That would have been all of our asses. So sorry that I take my job and the safety and security of the facility so fucking serious. I don't want to see this almost 18-year-old man-child fucking do something that affects another kid and hurts them. I said that. We boarded him. It was a nightmare. I complained to my boss. Get this. Because I said what I said, somebody complained about my candor. And they asked for me to retake the hands-on training. They're like, there's certain deficiencies in his ability to handle these situations. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, that's fucking bullshit. My boss is like, well, let's just do it because I'm going to retrain everybody in the next three months. You'll be the first one. We do this. It's actually in three days. You get paid for it, even though it's on your day off, obviously. But you'll get it done. It'll be, you know, a little bit of a mea culpa. And then they can't say shit because you'll be retrained. And I'm going to be there and I'm going to be right next to you so that... I can see that you have shown your proficiency in these techniques so that nobody can fucking make up that you don't know what you're doing. I'm like, wow, fucking thank you. My boss, great guy, military vet, family man. So from that incident, more people were pissed at me. And then it's like I couldn't live it down. Anybody was looking for any reason to fucking get me. And he's like, dude, you're a marked man. I have been in this position before. It's not fucking fun. So you got to kill him with kindness. Unfortunately, there was another incident shortly thereafter that. And... We're working with this girl, and she bit two nurses, and then I subbed in and grabbed an arm to control her, and uh, she's like, I'm going to spit on y'all, and I just instinctively said, you better not. Just because I said you better not, somebody complained about me. Just nitpicky bullshit. Well, she spit on my face. They're like, well, if you wouldn't have said that, she wouldn't have done that. I'm like, you don't know that. And frankly, it's instinctual to tell a kid not to do that. like, well, we don't talk to them, because that might amp them up. I'm like, These are kids with mental health issues, some of them so severe that if you say, good morning, they might be like, fuck you, or punch you. So just this mentality that you're not supposed to talk to the kids is so fucking messed up. It's a hospital, they're patients. If you talk to them, they're familiar with you, they feel more comfortable, they're less likely to flip the fuck out on you and take a swing, I think. Does that sound reasonable? Sounds reasonable. If you keep it to a point where the staff is just merely staffed, robots, so to speak, the kid's not going to have any respect or respond to it. I'm just sitting here like, do any of these kids ever get better in this place? It sounds like it's a fucking hellhole. Well, they they graduate out. They go to different day programs. They go to group homes. Some of them went to permanent mental health facilities. It's just really fucky. And here's part of the problem. Nobody took into consideration when I said it. I'm like, I don't mean this to say I know better because I worked in a jail. Because it was actually a hands-off facility. But if I'm not defaulting to what you taught me right away it's because I'm not fresh out of college and this is the first job you've taught me to go hands on I have 
15 years of law enforcement and corrections hands-on experience. That's defensive tactics. That shit is ingrained in my brain for my own survival. I have to reprogram my brain to default away from that and go with what you want. I got a lot better at it. It took some time, but nobody wanted to afford me a learning curve, apparently, because of my attitude. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You know, everybody's nitpicking the shit I did, but that guy that I talked about that bear hugged and tripped the kid and put him to the floor, mm-hmm. I'm like, is he going to get in trouble? They're like, well, I don't think you want to die on that hill. Well, what the fuck does he have on somebody that he can get away with that shit? No punishment for him that time. Yeah, it's fucked up. And he'd brag about fucking wrestling the kids. It's just like fucking manhandling them. Oh, I fucking showed him who's the boss. I would never fucking talk like that. But he did, and he gets away with it because he's well-liked. Anyways, overall, if you haven't got this idea, I'm trying to tell you that this place is the perfect example of the current state of cancel culture mentality that's plaguing society. There's no critical thinking, no willingness to hear the other side out. There's no second chances. Some are just like, oh, he did this, fuck him. It seems like it's that way. And this leads me now to the final incident that was the straw that broke the camel's back. There was a kid. She was flipping out, right? She apparently broke something at the desk and had a piece of plastic she was going to threaten to swallow it. That's a big deal. That's a trip to the hospital, a possible operation. They called me up to the floor, and I'm like, what's going on? I'm taking it easy. I'm trying to be mindful. I'm not trying to get jammed up and piss anybody off. I've been walking on eggshells for months. She walks away. She comes back. She jumps on the desk ledge again grab some shit, and she goes to walk away. I just let it slide because I'm like, I'm not going to do anything until somebody tells me to do something like I'm supposed to. Like, I'm not even going to fucking talk to her. All these people start walking up to fucking witness what's going on. So the kid's walking down the hallway towards her room. There's three staff down there. One of them was the gossipy old man. He comes walking back towards me and all this group of people. Is somebody going to do something? Is somebody going to call it? Call it as in call a CI, a critical incident. And then we take the kid to seclusion. Has to be a nurse to call it. Okay. He comes walking back. He's like, oh, it's funny because when this person got hired, that nurse, she said she was all about helping out with CIs. Now she doesn't know what she's doing. She's not sure what she's going to do with this kid. So I start walking that direction to kind of back her up, but I'm still not saying shit. This kid gets in this nurse's face and just goes, fuck you, bitch. And then turns around and almost elbows this fucking 70-year-old nurse that we hired for some goddamn reason. And I just said, hey, don't be talking like that. And you almost just made physical contact with the staff. That's not okay. So I asked the nurse, like, what are we doing here? Is she going to her room? Where is she going? And she's just like, okay, well, let's, you should probably go to seclusion. Like, okay, she said she wants the kid to go to seclusion. She doesn't call it over the walkie so everybody hears it. She just says it so I and the other old nurse can hear it. Other guy walked away when he was basically talking shit about her. Sounded like he wanted her to earn her stripes the hard way, struggling. Again, another instance that indicates how clicky this place is and that it fucking sucks. If mm-hmm. you were to learn their name and look them up on Glassdoor, which is where past employees give reviews of the place, multiple people have called it a toxic work environment. Anyways, I go down to help the nurse. We start trying to get the kid away from the wall. And I'm like, she said you're going to seclusion. That's what the nurse said. Now, she's not reiterating it. The nurse is like panicking. I start trying to walk to aim the kid, you know, direct her towards the other end of the hallway where the group is, all the other employees, so we can get her to walk to seclusion on her own. Mm -hmm. The nurse walks up next to her and tries to get her to go. I just pointed. Everybody just saw me look at the kid, block their path from walking away, and point towards where they were. Everybody got the assumption I was calling the audible on where the kid was going. Nobody thought to ask me later. I call for that dude to come back. I'm like, hey, can you come help? And he's like, no, nah, that nurse can handle it. She's got this. I'm like, are you fucking serious? Now, later he said, well, I didn't hear the nurse say that we were doing anything. So I thought that Jay was trying to call the shots, and I'm not going to let that happen. He's got to wait for a nurse. He threw me under the bus. Because this whole thing, spoiler alert, snowballed into a number of other incidents throughout the night where a bunch of people got hurt. So Fuckface doesn't help me and leaves us both hanging, which then leads to the nurse grabs the kid's arm. This nurse was about five foot four and weighed about 100 pounds. Mm-hmm. So I don't want her to get swung on, so I grab the kid's other arm. We start lifting her up and walking her to seclusion. She trips us both. All three of us go to the ground. That brown mark on my knee mm-hmm. is from a scab. I bruise my kneecap. Scab on my other knee. When we went down, 
the the floor is thin carpet on top of concrete. Right knee hit, left knee hit, left shoulder hit, came to rest on my fucking eyebrow. Had like a carpet burn on my face. Mm -hmm. So then I instinctively get the kids' arm in position for us to board them. Other people finally decide to jump in. The kid's like, oh, damn. And I'm like, damn is right. Somebody got super duper pissed that I said that. And my defense was, Jesus Christ, you just saw 215 fucking pounds of grown man go colliding with a concrete floor with four parts of his body. You can't even give me the benefit of the doubt that I might have been running on adrenaline and a little bit dazed? No, nobody wanted to pay me that kindness. We bored the kid. The kid's like one of the most wriggly motherfuckers I'd ever seen there. She was fighting hard to not be restrained. We get her restrained. I leave. Uh, I try to ask the charge nurse to fucking check out my knee at my boss's request when I contacted him. Charge nurse didn't fucking do it. Left me hanging. Now that particular charge nurse is a guy frequently would be like, all right, we're going to board them. Oh, we better get the IM, the injectable medication. Ready? This guy was asking for kids to be boarded and injected way too much, in my opinion. And I really wish I would have called MDH, the Minnesota Department of Health, on their asses. Because there were times I felt they were abusing the kids because they were fucking restraining them far too often. But anyways, I got hurt. That nurse got hurt. The kid didn't get hurt, even though people swore that I was using excessive force to help restrain her. And I had to defend that like, what the fuck? The kid had no bruises or injuries. My boss is like, yeah, I don't know. It's what they're saying. I'm like, who's saying it? I don't know. Nobody's offering their name. I'm like, so they're trying to anonymously fuck me over with bullshit complaints because somebody got hurt because it wasn't me who called it. And then that incident turned into two more incidents because other kids saw us board the kid in the hallway, which we're not supposed to do. Nobody said, hey, let's move her. Other people got hurt later on. One of them was a tech that's the girlfriend of one of the other security guys who was on vacation. So I'm sure he got an earful from her. Point being, everybody said that I was the one who decided everything was going to happen. I was the one to blame. I was the big bad guy. They had a fucking meeting with the performance improvement lady. It's basically, you know, the person that chews ass when there's ass to be chewed. Yeah. They all collectively got a talking to. And because I couldn't make it, and I told my boss, I'm not going to be able to make it. I got my kids. My wife works. He told him, what's his day off? I'm like, are you shitting me? You didn't say I had to be with my kids so my wife could work? That's like the most important fucking reason why I couldn't be there. Not just because it's my day off and I was blowing it off. That pissed people off even more. That's when that whole excessive force narrative came into play. After everybody got their asses chewed by performance improvement. And I wasn't there. It's like they thought I was going to go there and they were going to fucking put all the blame on me. And frankly, I don't blame that nurse for not speaking up because everybody thought I was the bad guy. She gets off scot-free. So she doesn't say shit. You have the worst luck with places you work, you know that? So I got written up like three days after it, and then a few weeks after that, people were still pissed because I didn't go to that meeting. And my boss is like, okay, so me and my boss, we think that we're going to keep you out of the nursing wings for a while. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Well, we just won't have you go on the nursing wings, the patient wings. I'm like, how am I supposed to do my job? Well, there's other parts of the building you can still patrol and do your job, but... You know, you just won't go there and we'll have other stuff for you to do. Like, that seems really unfair. Well, we're doing it to protect you from criticism. I'm like, really? Because it feels like you're punishing me. And just to appease other people that I apparently don't get the benefit of talking to. And at that point, I stood up and I said, I don't want to work here anymore. He's like, I'm sorry you feel that way. Does that fucking sound genuine to you? Probably stunned him though when you said that. No, because he had a very calm demeanor about it. I told him how frustrated I am. He's like, well, you know, uh, if you want, these people are trying to anonymously complain about you. You know, if you want, we can take it to HR. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Remember when you had to give me that write-up that you said it was unprecedented how the write-up happened without it going to HR to fucking screen it first? Interestingly enough, I put on there my reply about how I felt like I was being unfairly targeted and people were not forgiving anything I'd ever done and just trying to keep getting me in trouble over and over again because they didn't like me. But HR didn't do shit about it. He's like, that's true. I'm like, yeah. So I guess I know where we at, don't we? I stood up. I threw my badge on the desk. I said, have a nice life. I'm going to go grab my personal shit. If you feel the need to walk with me because you're afraid I'm going to raise hell, I'm not. I promise. I'll grab my personal effects and punch out, and that'll be the end of it. I walk up to the security office. I throw my shirt in the box of the spare ones. I say peace out to my other coworker who immediately tries to talk me out of it, but I said I'd had enough. I went to the punch clock, I entered my numbers, I walked the fuck out of there. 
Funny thing about that kid, the next day of that weekend, the kid was sitting on the staff desk. So this is before the complaints, before the write-up, before the meeting, before the I quit. The kid's on the desk. She won't fucking listen. I go up there. I play the whole you're in control. I don't want yesterday to happen again. I don't want to have to wrestle with you. You don't want me to put my hands on you. I hate that shit. I hate it. I find it traumatizing to you and me when you get boarded. So if you go to your room, that's it. It's good night. You're in control. Make your decision. And she's like, okay, good night. She walks off to her room. And another staff, a chick that's been there for like eight years, goes, what the fuck just happened? Mm-hmm. I'm like, I just talked her off the proverbial ledge by going into dad mode and reasoning with her. And if more people would let me do that more often, instead of saying, don't talk to the patients, you'd be surprised how many more CIs we can avoid. She's like, I guess. Well, they'll never know, will they? Nobody ever took the time to acknowledge the positive interactions I had or give me fucking credit for that. It's just, oh, we want to find reasons to fucking bag on you more. It's bullshit. So now I don't know where I'm going to land. I'm applying for some jobs. I don't know what I want to do. I definitely don't want to work around young millennials. It's like I just don't want to work around people anymore. Because they're so fucking hard to please. And nobody is willing to get to know each other properly. The security team, they got to know me great. They knew about all my personal shit at home. I was just like, yeah, so if I see him on edge some days, just ask me what's up and I might lay some shit on you. I won't go into too much detail, but that's what I got going on. So they, you know, respected that I'd come in and I'd fucking work extra hours and I always had everybody's back, even though I had so much on my shoulders at home. But Jesus Christ, fuck. Interact with the show on Twitter at what do we call it? That is at what do we call it? You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash what do we call it podcast show for the what do we call it podcast. I'm J-Man. And I'm number one fan Tim. And that's the end.